a supernatural God and nothing is impossible with. Amen. Uh, I want to, uh, I, I want to pray before I, I want to pray again. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, uh, Holy Ghost, just uh, move on this message to glorify and magnify you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your, your equipping your, your children to do the work that you've called us to do, Father. And we love you and we thank you, God, in the holy name of Jesus. Everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. Now, you know, for a church to function properly, you need a five-fold ministry. And God has given this church a five-fold ministry, and I praise God for that. Amen. Let's look and just see what God's Word has to say uh, this morning about it. Amen. You know, God has given us everything that we need is in the Word of God, and we're His children, and He's called us, and we're all, everyone that has Jesus in our heart, in, in our heart, is a child of the king, and guess what? We're part of the body of Christ, and we all have a function to do to make the body work properly. Amen? So we're going to look at it this morning and see uh, what the Lord has. They just turned the air condition on, too, by the way. <laughs> Praise God for that beautiful weather out there. I'm ready to get the cold weather gone and the pretty weather that God has given us out there. Let's look and see what the Lord has for us uh, this morning. Five kinds of ministry. You know, we all have, uh, as we grow spiritually, the Lord's saying this morning in message that he was going to lift us up to another spiritual level. I want to go as high as I can go, don't you? I want to have all the power I can get to glorify and magnify God and do the work he has called me to do. Amen. And uh, he, he, he trains us out there too, you know. We just keep going forward in the Lord and he keeps uh, uh, opening doors and you get more uh, intellect and wisdom and knowledge of him how do you get that you get in god's word and you study it in a daily manner amen you got to be in god's word every day and uh, he's got so much for us in that holy word let's look and see what the, the word says right here it says he gave some apostles and he gave some prophets and he gave some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers that's the five-fold ministry of god and I give God the praise because in our ministry, we have the five-fold ministry in our ministry. Amen. And I give God the praise for that. We're going to look at it here in just a little more detail here in just a minute. But, you know, I've worked in all of this. Jeanette's worked in all of it. B or some of us here has worked uh, in this five-fold ministry. It's like this one right here can touch every one of them. Amen. And so God's an awesome God. And he... Uh, opens doors and shows us ways to go and he calls some to be evangelists he calls some to be teachers some to be prophets some to be pastors because he is the one making the decisions amen and so you know i've been i've worked in i guess all of them but uh, there's one or two i really like and he called me to do something different i got to do what he says do amen praise god ever what it might be let's look and see he gave some apostles he gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, he gave some pastors and teachers. And I praise God for every one of them because the five-fold ministry helps the ministry to work uh, the way God wants it to work. Amen. And I give him the praise for that. Let's look right here at this uh, 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 first, the book of Acts 15:33. It talks about apostles. And after they had uh, tarried there a space, they were let go in peace from their brethren unto the apostles. Now, I'll tell you right now, we see God's word as apostles. The 12 disciples were apostles. God gave them anointing of power to go out into the world and do what he had called them to do. Amen. And some of them created and, and uh, built churches all over the land or whatever. Look at old Paul, what Paul's done uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I can't wait to get up there in heaven and talk to some of these folks you know oh uh, abraham isaac and jacob i want to have some conversation with these guys i want to ask them some things amen it's going to be great but the most greatest thing is going to be is be with the lord jesus christ and praise him and honor him and worship him amen let's look right here there's apostles now let's go a little bit further and look at prophets in acts 11 uh, 27 the word of god says 
And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Now, I want to tell you, you know, an apostle, apostle we just talked about is the apostle is one sent with full power of attorney, of attorney, attorney like a lawyer. Y'all know what I'm saying there? One sent with full power of eternity to, uh, like an attorney, to act in the place of another. Now, what does God call the apostle to do? To go out and do the things God called. Uh, we're going to do greater work, by the way. I'll be preaching on some of that uh, uh, tonight. If you can come, I pray that you do. But I'll tell you right now, God has called us to do greater works and to do these things. And he has made apostles to do the work uh, that he has uh, called us to do. And he has given us full power to do that. Amen. When he had his disciples there, he gave them full power to go out and do the things that uh, he did. He, he healed the sick and uh, made the blind man see and the crippled man walk. He healed the lepers. That's the God we serve. Well, he gave his uh, apostles uh, that same authority to go out and do the work uh, that needs to be done until he comes back. Amen. So that's what we're supposed to focus on as a child of God. And everyone in here has a job to do for the Lord. And they're not all the same. They're not all the same. Some of them are different, praise God. I can remember, I, I would like to say, I remember when I was a pastor in Greenwood, South Carolina. And I went to a, 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 this, a, this evangelist come to Greenwood, South Carolina, filled the church up. I think it was a church of God. And his name was Tommy Barnett. And I went, boy, and the power of God was on this man. So forceful, I will, I will never forget. And, and uh, he's, he went out in California and places like that, and he'd buy a whole shopping center. And he'd have that shopping center. Uh, he might have a, a Vietnamese church in that shopping center. He might have a Mexican church in that shopping center. He might have an American church in that shopping center, all Americans. But he had different folks uh, with denominations in that shopping center. That's amazing, isn't it? And uh, so he was getting the gospel out to everyone. Amen. That's an awesome thing. Think about that. And so as we look and see, uh, I, got, I got one of his books, and I read one of his books, okay? And I liked it a lot because he would have folks come up to him. You know, he had so much on him going on that God had called him and put him in the position that he was in. He had to obey the Lord and do what he called him to do. And he would have folks, uh, I remember uh, as I was reading one of the examples he, he called, and they had called him to, uh, they come up to the the pastor and he said, Pastor, said we need to go out there and get the Harley people and have a service for them. Pastor, we need to do that. He said, you know, you're exactly right. Go do it. <laughs> right. God called him to do what he was doing, but this man felt like we need to do this. Well, God's calling you. Go out there and talk to the Harley people and get them in here and we'll have a, a wonderful revival. And guess what? 2,500 Harley riders come in there and they had a great revival because of that. Amen. You see, it takes the whole body of Christ to move forward to do the work that God has called us to do. Amen. Now, I'll tell you another one. Uh, one time this uh, guy come to him and said, Pastor, to Tommy, and said, Pastor, said, we need to get a bunch of vans and, and go out and get the sick and the needy that's in, the, uh, in some of the homes out there. We need to go get them and bring them and minister to him. And the pastor said, you know, that is an excellent idea. I really like that. Go do it. So he put the ball back in where it should be. He went and got all the vans together. He went and coordinated all of that. And he went and got the sick folks that couldn't drive or whatever in some of the homes and brought them into the church. And guess what? They had a great uh, uh, blessing of the Lord poured out on those people because of that. Amen. And uh, uh, I learned a lot from that book as I read that book. I don't know. I might have gave it away to somebody else or whatever, but it was a good examples of how uh, to deal and handle certain things because certain people can only do so much. And everybody, just like Moses, what happened to Moses? Moses uh, had the whole delivery of the people from Egypt on him and he made all the decisions of what to do and it was wearing him down. 
because he had to make all of them decisions and do all of those things. And, and Moses' daddy-in-law, father-in-law, told him, said, you got too much on you. You need, to, you need to get some help. And so God told Moses, your daddy-in-law, listen to your daddy-in-law. He's right. Go pick out 70 men it's, uh, that's good of God and on fire for the Lord and bring them in here. And I'm going to take some of the anointing that's on you, Moses, uh, and I'm going to put it on them 70, and they'll make the decisions for that million-plus people that need to have decisions made. They'll make it. And, of course, the major, major decision would come to Moses. But you see how he distributed that out? And old Moses needed some help, amen. So he got the help uh, that he that was needed, amen. And think about it: an, uh, an apostle has much work to do because, and they can do all of them. And uh, uh, you know, as you become apostle or whatever, who might be apostles, the apostles I read about is the twelve uh, disciples uh, uh, was apostles, amen. But I'll tell you right now, uh, uh, when you uh, get in that uh, category right there. You know how to teach. You know how to preach. You know how to evangelize. You know how to uh, uh, open churches, do those things that God wants you to do. But we still need the fivefold ministry. You need help uh, to do some of these things. Amen. And just like the apostles, uh, they went out and they trained people and taught people what to do and how to do things. Well, we've learned how to open up churches and, and do things that God wants us to do and we got six churches in Dominican Republic. Amen. We give God the praise for that. Uh, he, is, he, he is doing an awesome work there. Uh, just to give you an example. Do you know how to open, what the mechanics are, and how, what you must do and get all this stuff done? There's a lot in, in there to do in some of those things. But God always has somebody that can do those things. If he sends you out to do it, uh, rest assured you're going to be able to do it. You'll have full power as a lawyer, I, I would put it, uh, put it like that. <laughs> to act in place of another. God sends them to do what he would do. You are a messenger. Amen. And the message is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think about it. Now, that's uh, talking about uh, 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 apostles. Now, and these days came prophets from Jerusalem and Antioch. Now, there's also prophets. We got prophets here, right here in this, this uh, our sanctuary. Praise God for that. Now, let's talk about a prophet. Sometimes a preacher is a prophet. He might, uh, uh, one of us uh, uh, pastors or preachers might uh, speak uh, of some futuristic thing that God's fixing to do or whatever. That's prophecy. And then we have prophets uh, that God's calling certain people to prophesy. Amen? And uh, uh, that's uh, to foretell the future is a gift of the Spirit. Amen? Now think about that. That's awesome. I really like this next one because I used to be a, uh, I was like Roy, I was evangelist. I could blow up, blow in, and blow out. I didn't have to worry about the church and all of the problems and stuff that's going on in the church. See, I could go in there and praise God and worship God and get the message of the good news and the gospel and try to win souls as an evangelist. And then I could go tell the pastor, pray for your pastor and his wife, that God's going to give him that strength because he had to stay there and handle all the other issues. <laughs> Amen. So that was an awesome thing, evangelist. I used to, uh, 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 Roy and Jeanette started out evangelizing. They used to go into prison, prisons and anywhere uh, somebody would open the door, they would go evangelize and preach the good news, wherever it would be. And I was an evangelist for a long time, going to prisons and preach and wherever God would send me in some churches and, and things of that, uh, that God would do. And the next day there were of Paul's company departed and came unto him, uh, Caesarea, and entered into the house of Philip, the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. Now, Philip had four daughters, and they evangelized too, females. Now, look right here. Philip was called a what? An evangelist. Let's look a little, little bit about uh, an evangelist. Evangelist goes out, and he publicly, he preaches in certain areas to convert others to Christian faith. Evangelist goes out. Amen. Uh, I can remember in Dominican Republic, we had two or three, uh, we've had a bunch of outings where 
uh, there would be an evangelistic service out in the streets and things of that nature. We do a lot of that in the Dominican Republic. We've done it here. We've done it uh, uh, out in uh, beer, uh, liquor stores and stuff in West Greenville and other places. Uh, we used to get flatbed trailers and get up there and preach and make music and evangelize the Greenville. We did that a lot uh, in the community where God would send us to go do that. That's going out and evangelizing. Just like the, uh, uh, oh yeah, by the way, they'll be going out uh, Saturday. They'll be going to the street people and they'll be feeding the street people and they'll be telling those folks about the good news of Jesus Christ. They'll be going out and evangelizing and doing some of that uh, Saturday. So those that can uh, get with BR and be there. That'll be this Saturday in BR. And so they'll be going out evangelizing, doing uh, uh, some of the five-fold ministry that God has called us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But uh, remember, uh, 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 this one touches all of them. That's the longest one. goes way out, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Look here. Let's see what uh, the next scripture that God has for us. The evangelist, Timothy. Uh, let's see what Timothy says here. But watch there in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. Sometimes you might be uh, persecuted uh, for what you're doing. Guess what? You will be. I've been persecuted many times uh, for being a Christian and doing what God's called me to do. I look back and see some of it. Uh, uh, but God loves you, and he'll be with you. And guess what? We're more than victorious uh, because uh, reading the back of the book, we win. <laughs> We're more than conquerors because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? And he has called us to do that. And he'll give you every bit of the power and anointing that you need that he had. He's given it to us to go out and uh, share the gospel, the good news. Think about it. Let's look at this next one. Oh, this is a, a, a good one. No, that's uh, Matthew. I don't. Uh, evangelist. Let's look at Matthew 9, 36. And uh, I, I want to tell you, too, uh, while I'm here, Acts, the, the book of Acts talks about uh, God has given us much power. You read the book of Acts uh, 1, 2 through 8, 8. You're endued with power from on high. God has given you the power you need to work in the fivefold ministry. Amen. Or to do what you're doing, God has given you power to do that. Now let's go a little bit further right here and look right here. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Okay, now let's look right here. What is this talking about? Sheep having no shepherd, they were scattered out. It's talking about a pastor. What does a pastor do? He is the shepherd of the sheep. And it's a big responsibility, by the way. I want to tell you right now, pastor, all of it is. A pastor trends, tends to, to spiritual welfare of Christians. A pastor is supposed to get you up to your fullness that God has for you so you can go out and do work that God wants you to do. Amen? Now think about this. Uh, the welfare of Christians, the congregation, he is a shepherd, knowing knowledge of God and teaching uh, the things. So a pastor takes care of a shepherd of the flock uh, in the house of God. Amen? He's got a big responsibility there. You got sick folk, you got things going on. You need to grow and help and counsel and do these things that God has called us to do as a pastor. Uh, that's some of the accountability and responsibility that they do and prepare messages and stuff like that. That's some of the five-fold ministry we're talking about here uh, this morning. Now let's go a little bit further and look uh, in uh, Ma uh, Mark 6.34. Yes. And Jesus, when he came out, he saw much people and was moved with compassion to towards them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. You know, who is, our, who is the great shepherd? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the great shepherd, and he tends to his flock. We're his. Well, he has given the pastors a flock uh, to tend to and minister to and uh, 
present the word of God to them uh, so they can grow spiritually with God. Amen. So that's an awesome uh, thing that God has done there. Let's go right here and look uh, at another one. This is a real good one too. Amen. Five-fold ministry is what we're talking about. Look at this one right here, talking about teachers. And now there were in the church were at Antioch certain prophets, teachers, as Barnabas and Simon was called, uh, Niger and Lucas of Cheyenne and Maon, which had been brought up with Herod in Tertar and Saul. Now, let's go back and look right here what it talks about. Teachers. God wants teachers to do what? Spiritually grow the congregation. Amen. So what do we have? We have Bible school, don't we? What does that do? Our teachers teach the Word of God and help you to grow spiritually in the Word of God. And you need to study that lesson, do the best you can, and grow in every area that you can. Think about it. We have teachers that teaches the Word of God, and that helps us to grow. So you come Sunday morning. Adam was teaching this morning. He's teaching the Word of God. Amen. And so we have that. It's a part of what? The five-fold ministry. Amen. Praise God. Let's look right here. And uh, what does a teacher do? A teacher teaches the Word of God. And what does that do for you and I when you're taught the Word of God? It builds your faith. Amen. It builds our faith. And we need every bit of them. And I'll tell you right now, and uh, just because you're the five-fold ministry we have working in this church, it is working in this church, but I'm here to tell you right now, there's other parts uh, of the body of Christ that has to do uh, with uh, uh, the, uh, the church and what's going on there. You need to remember the Lord thy God. He has called everybody to do something. He has something special for everybody that's in here to do something. We're not all the preacher, the teacher, or the apostle, or the prophet. We got other areas in our lives or in our spiritual walk with God that God wants you and I to do. Amen. I, I, when it comes to my mind, I've told you this before, this lady was a shut-in. She couldn't come to church. She couldn't help. She couldn't do nothing, okay? And she cried out to God, God, I want to be a part of the body of Christ. I want to be able to help and do something, God. You know what God told her to do? She couldn't get out. She couldn't do nothing. She said, I want you to pray for Billy Graham every day. That's an awesome thing that needs to be done. I pray that each one of you are praying for us uh, in a powerful way that God will help us to direct uh, this ministry the way God wants us to go. Amen because he's in the lead, praise God. And I praise God that this uh, congregation has the five-fold ministry in it. I give God that praise for that, amen. So this is some of the things that God has given us. And if you see one there that maybe you ain't working in or you want to work in, start praying to God and ask him to let you work in that area if you feel led to work in that area. Usually what will be happening if you're working in one of the areas, uh, you all, God has already led you in that area and you're working in it already because uh, you sense it in your spirit that uh, well, that's what God wants you to do. Amen. So is that awesome or what? I think that's awesome. The five-fold ministry that God has given us. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And I praise God uh, that we have that working in liberty ministry. I give him the praise. Let's everybody bow our head, please. Lord, we praise you and we thank you so much for the word. And we give you the praise for the word, God, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus you'll touch each and every one of these fivefold ministries that the folks uh, that's been called to work in that ministry, supernatural anointing to do more than they could ever anticipate it because of you, God. And I pray you bless each and every one that's in here uh, this morning. I pray that any sick uh, or uh, uh, any among us that you'll touch them right where they're at, God. And God, I speak a blessing over the people, God, in number 624, 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The 